Good morning, and welcome to Mount Vernon Place United Methodist Church in Baltimore, Maryland. We are continuing our journey of Charles Wesley's most beloved songs. This week, October 30th, 2022, we are celebrating All Saints Sunday. The Charles Wesley hymn for this week is Come, Let Us Join Our Friends Above, which may be found in the United Methodist Hymnal number 709. This hymn reminds us of our connection on earth and that those connections continue with those who have passed ahead of us. We are all members of the community of saints, one church on earth and one in heaven. This Sunday, we also remember those loved ones who have died who we continue to hold in our hearts. May the word this week bless you and encourage you for the week ahead. Our scripture this week comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. God revealed his hidden design to us, which is according to his good will and the plan that he intended to accomplish through his Son. This is what God planned for the climax of all times, to bring all things together in Christ, the things in heaven along with the things on earth. We have also received an inheritance in Christ. We were destined by the plan of God who accomplishes everything according to his design. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I spend some time nearly every day in the cemetery garden next to our home. I've mentioned this before, written about it a little bit. Um, it's an important place for me. Uh, we were told by our real estate agent that some people don't like moving or living next to a cemetery, that that made it less desirable for some people. That was a little strange, uh, but I guess people, you know, aren't so sure about, uh, about that, or some people aren't. And I've certainly heard our, my share of jokes about, you know, our neighbors being kind of quiet and that kind of stuff. You know, we don't hear much from them and all that kind of, food. you can imagine those comments about living next to a cemetery. Yet from the time we've moved here, I found it to be a restful place and a quiet respite from life's busyness. Certainly the trees, shrubbery, and flowers are beautiful, but there's something more about it, at least for me, something I can never put my finger on, really. Uh, there are a couple of dozen gravestones there. Uh, I think you can, can you see one in, or see some in this picture? Uh, And there's some interesting graves, native plants. There's little signs about that. There's nice little trails. But the sum is much more than the parts. And somehow the whole mysterious experience of death and life seems to come together there for me. As Soon as I enter, I sense my body slow down, my breathing is easier, and I'm more aware of my surroundings. Uh, even our dogs slow down as we wind through the trails and as we take in the chipmunks and foxes and deer and the occasional box turtle, we saw one last week. Uh, I imagine that all of wildlife feel this as well, at least I'm imagining that. Uh, being there reminds me of life's gifts of beauty and wonder and the deep connections we share with heaven and earth, life and death, time and eternity. Scripture tells us that to die is gain. That's first or from Philippians 1, 21. To die is gain. Really? Is dying gaining? What gain can there possibly be in death? This time of year, as the leaves turn color and fall and plants go from green to yellow to brown and flowers pull back and into the earth, back into, the, into the, the bulbs, and the days become shorter. 
I'm reminded again about the reality of death. It's a bittersweet time. Charles Wesley wrote, come let us join our friends above, uh, which was about this time of year, uh, to remind us that earth and heaven are closer than we may think. He's describing what is sometimes called the communion of saints. Those on earth and heaven who love and serve God on earth as in heaven. You know, we join with those who have gone before with the angels, with all the heavenly hosts, and that we're connected somehow. Even though we don't see them, every once in a while we may sense them. Uh, this is, these are the words from the hymn. We're going to sing it at the end of the service today. Uh, come let us join our friends above. And it goes like this, this is from Charles Wesley. Come let us join our friends above who have obtained the prize and on the eagle wings of love to joy celestial rise. Let saints on earth unite to sing with those to glory gone. For all the servants of our king in earth and heaven are one. All the servants on earth of our king in earth and heaven are one, he says. One family we dwell in him, one church above, beneath, though now divided by the stream, the narrow stream of death, one army of the living God. To his command we bow. Part of his host have crossed the flood and part are crossing now. What about we're in the process of crossing? Hmm? So prayer is our link. Prayer connects us here and there. For here we can pray for those who have gone before to remember and sense their presence and their wisdom with us today. Scripture tells us also at the same time that they are praying for us. Jesus himself is praying for us. Scripture says that Jesus is our intercessor. This is from Hebrews. This is why Christ did not go into a building made by humans and was only a copy of the real one. Instead, he went into heaven and is now there with God to help us, to help us. Prayer connects us. I continue to give thanks for my father who died in 2005. Every once in a while, I get a sense that he's with me and reminding me of something that he said, something that he did. And I can't, I don't think we have any idea about how far our prayers go and where they go, what effect they may have. Now, I, I can imagine them connecting with our son in California, you know, across all the miles, you know, connecting all of us today, wherever we may be, but connecting, you know, everywhere around the world. We're with Sharon this morning in Israel right? And she's with us. We're connected through prayer, through our spiritual sense of things, through how we've been built by God. This is all mind-boggling. It's not something we can, we can prove or explain, really. We can just sort of describe it. It seems more poetic than scientific, although we know the power in, in our bodies of prayer, there's many studies of people that go into the hospital with prayer and the people that don't and the differences that that prayer makes. This is not just something that, that's kind of cute and nice. It can make all the difference in, in our lives and in other people's lives. This is all mind boggling. We have some sense in all of this of just how much we are loved by God, how God in heaven continues to love us, and God is as close to us, close to us as our own body, our own little parts of our bodies. I'm helped by C.S. Lewis, who made this observation. You cannot in your present state understand eternity, but you can get some likeness of it if you say that time works backward and forward in heaven, what about that? Time shifts too. Time works backward and forward in heaven. And he says, 
the good person's past begins to change so that his forgiven sins and remembered sorrows take on the quality of heaven. In other words, we're continuing to grow even in heaven. Things are continuing to move on us, for us, on our behalf. So is death an ending? Not many people would say. Everything's over at death. Everything ends. Is it a beginning? Some of us would say. Or is it somehow a grand continuing that life and death are all woven together? It's not that this world doesn't matter, as some people would say, that it's all about time with God in heaven. And it's not the other way either. It's about the, the, the interplay, the interconnections. When, we're, are with, when we're with our loved ones who may not have much time on earth, and I think about my own mother who's 95, and I can see the changes unfolding in her life. It almost seems like weekly there's something uh, for mom. We find that our prayers may change. Now it's prayers for the lessening of fears, for an ability to accept the changes that her body is foisting on her, to stay as connected as she can to the present and to us, her family. It's difficult to have to work so hard for basic awarenesses, which she does, just to hear me, just to understand what I'm saying. And yet, as those we love find ways to let go of who and what they were, they are teaching us to let go of what we think is so important and necessary. Maybe get grounded with who we really are in God. English poet philosopher David White wrote this poem called The Journey. Above the mountains, the geese turn into the light again, painting their backs back silhouettes on an open sky, or their black silhouettes on an open sky. Sometimes everything has to be inscribed across the heavens so you can find the one line already written inside you. Sometimes it takes a great sky to find that first bright and indescribable wedge of freedom in your own heart. Sometimes with the bones of the black sticks left when the fire has gone out, Someone has written something new in the ashes of your life. You are not leaving. Even as the light fades quickly now, you are arriving. We are arriving. We're continually arriving. Continuing to become who we are. Who we were made to be who we were crafted. I see the word crafted all over. Everything's crafted these days. Well, we were crafted by God uniquely, wonderfully, beautifully. And that becoming does not stop when the light fades and the fire goes cold. At the end of Les Miserables, Jean Valjean is dying after a long and difficult life. When Fantine appears from heaven, to bid Jean Valjean to join her, the nearness of his heavenly reward is palpable. And one's heart can't help but swell with joy and anticipation. As he asks for God's forgiveness, he is reunited with Fantine amidst the chorus of heaven. And at the same time, Marius and Cosette, dressed in their wedding clothes, stand in the space between heaven and the audience painting for us a picture of life together in heaven in our eternal home. And the song is sung. We will live together again in freedom in the garden of the Lord when the chain will be broken and all will have their reward. We find ourselves with everyone else wiping back tears. Why are our hearts so deeply moved? because we've been given hope. Hope that whatever we've experienced on earth will be taken up into something better, something larger, that there is unending love 
a wedding feast that lasts forever in our eternal home and in which we participate on earth and in heaven. We are joined with our friends above, not just to join by a wire or a rope or a string, but joined by love, joined in love, joined in fulfillment, in abundance, in deep connection. I say this often and I believe it completely, not love never ends. God, because God never ends. Love never dies. Love is stronger than death. Love continues. That's what resurrection is. That's what we remember as we remember our saints today. And we remember God's connection with us today. How deep it really is. The forms may change, but faith, hope, and love remain. And the greatest of these is love. God's peace be with you. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If the people of Mount Vernon Place United Methodist Church may be of service to you, please email us at mvpumcbaltimore at gmail.com. But for now, may the Lord bless you and keep you until we can meet again. God be with you.